Let us talk about the different types of crosses. We will be talking about three types, test cross, back cross and reciprocal cross. So let us start with test cross. As the name tells us, we are going to be testing something. And here we will be testing or trying to find out the genotype of the unknown. So the purpose of this test cross is to find the genotype of the unknown man. To understand this, we will start with the known genotype so that we get a, a clue of it and then we will come to the ratios that by simply knowing the ratios how can we reach to this point for which we are studying this test cross. There are three situations. Our unknown could be homozygous dominant, our unknown could be heterozygous or our unknown could be homozygous recessive. So these are three possibilities that we have. In a test cross, we cross that unknown with one of the parent and that parent has to be homozygous recessive. If we make such kind of crosses, we would reach to certain ratios and then we will backtrack it. Suppose these are our unknowns, but for understanding we are writing their genotypes here. We will cross it with one of the parent which is homozygous recessive. Now if we plot a punit square, see what ratio we get. Here, capital T, lowercase on this side. All four are going to be heterozygous. So here our ratio is going to be 4 is to 0. Same thing here, we'll cross this with the parent which is homozygous recessive. Let us plot a punit square for this also. The gamut produces by, produced by this plant would be capital and one lowercase, that is one dominant, one recessive. And on this side, it's going to be both recessive. Now here, the offspring will be heterozygous because one capital T is coming from here and a lowercase or recessive is coming from here. Same is going to be here, capital T from here and lowercase here. In this case, it will have both recessive genes. So out of these four, this one and this, they are going to be tall. So the ratio here will be two tall is to two short. So two are tall and two are short. Here all four were tall and none of them are short. Let us take the third situation. We cross it with pure recessive. We are crossing all unknowns with one of the parent which is recessive, homozygous recessive. In this case, this parent would produce gametes having recessive alleles and here also recessive. So four offsprings, they will get only the recessive traits. That means all four are going to be short or dwarf. The ratio is going to be four, all four. But we will write it as 0 is to 4. When we write the ratio, the first number is given to dominant, then the middle numbers are for heterozygous and on this side the numbers are for recessive. So there is none of them which is tall, so it is 0 and all 4 are short. So we have understood three types of test crosses taking the known organism. But if we backtrack it, if a question is asked that if an unknown is crossed or if a test cross gives you a ratio of 4 is to 0, what is the genotype of the unknown? So what is the question? That if we make a test cross, that means unknown is crossed with a homozygous recessive and the ratio obtained is 4 is to 0, then what is the genotype of an unknown? It is homozygous 
dominant. In a test cross, if we get a ratio of 2 is to 2, which can be simplified to 1 is to 1 also, then the genotype of our unknown is heterozygous. And if in a test cross, we get a ratio of 0 is to 4, then our unknown is homozygous recessive. Only to understand, we started with the known genotype. But if we remove this, and if we have to track it from here going upward, then this indicates that the capital T for tallness is coming from the unknown. And our genotype of the unknown is going to be capital T, capital T or homozygous dominant. So, in a monohybrid test cross, these are the three ratios that we get. Now, let us talk about a dihybrid cross and do the test cross with a dihybrid and we will come to the ratios of dihybrid. In monohybrid, one more time, if the ratio is 4 is to 0 of a test cross, then unknown is going to be homozygous dominant. In a test cross, if the ratio is 2 is to 2 or 1 is to 1, then unknown is heterozygous. And if the ratio is 0 is to 4, then the unknown is homozygous recessive. Now let us talk of the same test cross using a dihybrid cross and come to the ratios. Let us take dihybrid test crosses now. And as we discussed in the monohybrid one, we started with the known uh, genotypes. Here also we will take the known genotypes. So there are three possibilities. It could be pure dominant for both the genes. We are taking a dihybrid cross. The second situation is heterozygous. And third situation is a recessive one. And here also we will cross these so-called unknowns with pure recessive. That means one of the parent which is homozygous recessive. In this case also we will cross it with homozygous recessive and here also with the same. So this is the basic idea of test cross and the ones which we have written here in black these are supposedly our unknowns and again we are going to backtrack this. This we are writing so that we can reach to those ratios. The gametes produced by this, that is our unknown, would be capital T and capital P, whereas the parent, homozygous recessive, would produce lowercase t and lowercase p, that is recessive type of gametes. The offsprings are going to be 16 here because 4 gametes are produced by a dihybrid ratio. So here it is going to be TP, TP, capital and TP, here all are going to be recessive. Now, in this case, our offsprings will have here capital T and lowercase, capital P and all are going to be same. That means the ratio is going to be 16 are tall and purple and 0. That means none of them are short and white. So our ratio is 16 is to 0. 16 are tall and purple. This is the ratio which we are getting when our unknown is homozygous for both the traits. In case of monohybrid cross, test cross, we got the ratio 4 is to 0. Here we are getting 16 is to 0. In this case, the gametes produced by this plant would be 4 types. That is capital T with capital P, capital T, T with small or recessive P, small T with capital and small T with small P. And the parent that is homozygous recessive is going to produce only one type of gametes. Now when we fill this punit square, here we will get capital T and small t, capital P and small p. All four are going to be same. Capital T, small t, capital P, small p. Capital T, small t. All four are of one type. That means they are tall and purple. Here, 
the ratio is going to be or the genes which are going to come is capital T from here, small t from here, recessive P and recessive P. So they're going to be tall and wide. All four, they will be all alike. So these will be tall and wide. Let us talk about this one. It gets the small t is from both and one capital P from here but a lowercase p from here. All four are going to be same. So they will be short but purple. So short and purple. And what about this one? Here, lowercase t and lowercase t and p's are also recessive. So all four of same type. So they are going to be short and wide. That means here, four are showing the dominant traits, tall and purple. The other four are showing one dominant trait, tall, and one recessive trait, that is for color. Here also four are showing one dominant trait, but that is for color, and for height, they are short. And these four are showing all recessive traits. That means they are short and white. So the ratio is here, four, is to 4, is to 4, is to 4. Or we can simplify this ratio to 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So if in a dihybrid test cross, our ratio is 4 is to 4 is to 4 is to 4, then our unknown is heterozygous. And if our ratio is 16 is to 0, then our unknown is homozygous dominant. What should be the ratio here? This unknown will produce one type of gametes with small t and small p that is recessive for both the characters and this anyways is recessive. So if we plot a punit square, we don't have to fill the complete punit square. We can reach to conclusion just by drawing or writing one gamete. All four are going to be same here. All four are going to be same here. So what we get here is both lowercase t that is recessive and both small p's. So all 16 offsprings here will be short with white flowers. So our ratio will be 0 is to 16. And if this is our ratio then the unknown is homozygous recessive. Just to recap, we are backtracking now. We started to understand the dihybrid test cross. We started with the known genotype. But if the question says that in a dihybrid test cross, the ratio is 16 is to 0, what is the genotype of the unknown? The genotype is going to be homozygous for both the traits. If in a dihybrid test cross, the ratio is 4 is to 4 is to 4 is to 4 or 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, simplified form, then the genotype of the unknown is going to be heterozygous for both. And if we get 0 is to 16, then our unknown is homozygous recessive. So now we know the ratios of test cross in a monohybrid test cross as well as in a dihybrid test cross. So just by knowing the ratios, we can reach to the conclusion of the genotypes of our unknowns. And this would also help us reach to the ratios Many times when on genetics questions are asked, they just give us this cross or this cross and they will ask us that what would be the ratio. And in exam, we don't have time to make the complete punit square and count the numbers. If we see this, we, it should click that this is an organism and it is crossed with a pure homozygous recessive. So it is a test cross. And if we know the genotype of this one, we can easily conclude the ratio. So it is going to help us if test cross based questions are asked or simple cross based questions are asked. But the ratios are very, very important in both monohybrid as well as dihybrid test cross.